Okay, in our video series on emergency medicine, in this video, we'll be talking about thyrotoxic crisis or thyroid storm. We'll discuss that what is thyrotoxic crisis and how do you manage thyroid storm in emergency department? First of all, what is thyrotoxic crisis? Thyrotoxic crisis or thyroid storm is an acute life-threatening hypermetabolic state induced by excessive release of thyroid hormones. As we know that thyroid hormones maintain the metabolism of the body. They run the metabolic machinery of the body. And in thyrotoxic crisis, as the name shows, that there is excessive release of thyroid hormone, which results in a hypermetabolic state. And that hypermetabolic state is life-threatening and it is sudden, acute. Usually it happens in the patients who are already having a pre-existing thyrotoxic state. Those patients are already in a compensated thyrotoxic state, but all of a sudden they develop sudden thyrotoxicosis, sudden release of thyroid hormones resulting in thyrotoxic crisis. And that acute condition is life-threatening. And the presentation is that patient will be hypermetabolic. Therefore, they will be having fever since the metabolic machinery is running very fast. There will be tachycardia and the patient will be delirious. Patient will be in delirium. There will be systolic hypertension. As we know that the thyroid hormone causes tachycardia, increase gut motility. They increase the metabolism of the body. Therefore, generate heat and fever. And this, there will be systolic hypertension the systolic blood pressure will be very high. And remember that thyrotoxicosis have a very strong correlation with atrial fibrillation. A thyroid disease has a strong correlation with atrial fibrillation. Due to excessive pumping of the heart, there is damage to the heart that results in abnormal rhythm generation. That abnormal rhythm generation results in atrial fibrillation. If you want to know about atrial fibrillation, I have talked about atrial fibrillation, treatment, management, and symptoms in detail in my video on atrial fibrillation. You can check out the link in the description below. On examination, you might see an enlarged thyroid gland, and you might also be able to appreciate a thyroid brewery. The precipitating factors of a thyrotoxic crisis is that a recent thyroid surgery can result in thyrotoxic crisis or an infection of the thyroid gland can result in thyroiditis, inflammation of the thyroid gland, rupture of the thyroid cells resulting in release of thyroid hormone in the blood. An MI can even cause thyrotoxic crisis in a patient with pre-existing thyroid disease or trauma. So these are all the precipitating factors of thyrotoxic crisis. Now coming to the treatment and management of thyrotoxicosis. Treatment and management of thyrotoxicosis is aimed at counteracting the peripheral effects of thyroid hormone. We will give drugs that will block the peripheral action of thyroid hormone. We'll also give drugs that inhibit the thyroid hormone synthesis. And we will treat the systemic complications of thyroid hormone. And if we are unable to control the patient's thyrotoxic crisis with the above three, then we might have to consider doing total thyroidectomy removal of the thyroid gland to save the patient life. Now, if a patient presents to you in emergency department with thyrotoxic crisis, the first thing that you need to do is that you have to maintain an IV access and start fluids if the patient is dehydrated. And if the patient is vomiting and cannot take feed, you have to pass NG tube in emergency department. Then while passing the IV line, you can take blood sample and you can send the blood samples for T3, T4 and TSH levels. And, and you can continue the treatment even before the results are back if the patient is in severe condition. And you can also send blood cultures if you suspect that infection has resulted in damage of the thyroid gland and release of thyroid hormones, you can go for blood cultures. And if the patient is agitated, what you can do is that you can sedate the patient if needed. You can give pleuropromazine 50 mg per oral or IM. But when you are giving a sedative, you must monitor blood pressure of the patient. If there is no contraindication and patient has normal cardiac output, what you can do is that you can give propanolol 60 mg every 4 to 6 hours. 
what propanolol does is that propanolol is basically a beta blocker it blocks the peripheral sympathetic effects of thyroid hormones what it does that it stops the tremors it controls the blood pressure it controls the tachycardia and other than that propanolol a beta blocker has an additional effect that it it inhibits the conversion of t4 to t3 in periphery since there is conversion of t4 to t3 in periphery this conversion of thyroid hormone results in activation of thyroid hormone so when you inhibit the conversion of t4 to t3 by giving propanolol you inhibit the action of thyroid hormone and control the thyrotoxic crisis if beta blocker is contraindicated like in copd patient or asthma patient what you can do is that you can give diltiazem diltiazem is basically a calcium channel blocker which slows down the heart rate and after that you can give anti thyroid drugs as i said that we have to block the peripheral actions of the thyroid hormone by giving propanolol and now we are inhibiting the production of thyroid hormone by giving anti thyroid drugs like carbimazole carbimazole is given 15 to 25 mg every 6 hourly orally so carbimazole inhibits the production of thyroid hormone from the thyroid gland propanolol inhibits the peripheral action and peripheral activation of thyroid hormone after 4 hours you can give lugal solution lugal solution is basically aqueous iodine solution 0.3 ml every 8 hour orally well diluted in water for 7 to 10 days why are we giving iodine in a patient who is already in a thyrotoxic crisis since we know that iodine is a important component in the production of thyroid hormone the important logic behind it is an effect called as wolf chaikoff effect wolf chaikoff effect is an effect that if you give excessive amount of iodine from outside that excessive intake of iodine from outside will inhibit the uptake of iodine in the thyroid gland so if you inhibit the uptake of iodine in thyroid gland by giving excessive amount of iodine from outside you will inhibit the production of thyroid hormone that is called as wolf chaikoff effect so we give lugal solution iodine solution to inhibit the uptake of iodine by wolf chaikoff effect you can also give hydrocortisone 100 mg 6 hourly iv or dexamethasone 2 mg 6 hourly orally if you suspect an infection as a cause of thyrotoxic crisis then you must treat it you can treat it with coamoxiclav 1.2 gram per 8 hourly iv and you should that since that patient is having a hyperthermia high temperature you should give cooling blankets you should try to control the temperature with cold sponging you should reduce the layers of the patient you should reduce the clothing as well as you should also start paracetamol if needed but cold sponging should be the priority after that you should go for paracetamol in summary we talked about what is thyrotoxic crisis and what is its presentation what are the precipitating factors and then we talked about the treatment in which you develop iv access you take samples for thyroid hormones and then you give sedation to the patient if needed with by giving chlorpromazine you give beta blocker to block the peripheral actions and you give anti thyroid drug to decrease the production of thyroid hormone and after that you give lugal solution and iodine solution to prevent uptake of iodine in the thyroid gland by wolf chaikoff effect then you give steroids and you treat the infection you do cold sponging to to prevent the rise in temperature and hyperthermia if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency management the link of those videos is given in the description below thank you very much